I'm going to show you what happened. I'm going to show you what caused it and give you a way, a couple ways to prevent it. Coming to you from the sawmill shed this morning. <laughs> Look, we got a little situation with the mill. Hope all y'all's doing good this morning. Hope everything's going well. We got to get this situation fixed before I can continue to cut. Uh, but let's get down here and let's get to it and show you what I'm talking about. All right, I can probably better show it to you from this side as far as how this thing is set up. Right here on this Timber King mill, this is the back of the carriage on the uh, control end, the back of the carriage. Right here is a pin, there's a bolt that goes through. There's a sprocket on this one, there's a sprocket on this one. What happened? this chain had gotten loose my i guess my feed chain entered my, uh, to move that up and down the mill and uh, how i know it had been loose as you was cutting whoever uh, owns the timber king mills out there knows that thing will get to slapping inside of those inside of these rails well actually be this rail because it goes up to the that, that bar right there, and that drive, I guess you would call it that the drive bar. It's got a sprocket up there. Your chain runs from here, down the rail, up. That drive motor right there turns that bar, which is linked on both sides. And then the chain comes right back down and goes forward. Well, as that, that sprocket right there turns and drives this bar, of course, it turns the sprocket, mill goes forward. Okay, basic, basic stuff. But try to get you in here where you can even see this. All right, you can barely see the tooth of that sprocket. Get my finger up here, right there. That chain jumped off to the side. Excess slack does not help that. And what happened? I was cutting down the, cutting a piece of cypress yesterday, yesterday evening, and it had some vines on it. Well, you can see that drive chain, that you can see that drive chain right here. With that extra slack in that sprocket, this stick, I'm guessing wedged in here. You can see where it's chewed up on that end. Wedged in here. I don't know where it was sitting. Could have been laying any, anyways. I ran over it. Most of the time, it will push it out of the way. But this time right here, it was laid here, sucked it up in the sprocket, chain come off. So if you see debris, bark, limbs, uh, it doesn't matter how small, or of course, really big stuff, it'll what will happen. When you get really big, let me get back down here. When you get big stuff on there and it's kind of long, you see your bunk right here it will pinch that up against it and jam it up. So, moral of the story, clean that junk off. Stop for just a minute, go get it off the mill, save you some headache, and all that good stuff. How I plan on trying to fix this without picking this back end of the mill up is and loosen this up, possibly even just go ahead and take that nut off there. And it'll slack this whole tire chain off where I can pull it that way because it is the front sprocket. Um, it is the front sprocket that the chain come off of and I better pull the slack back, put it around the sprocket and then pull it back forward. I'm most likely gonna have to loosen the back one also and we'll have to do a little adjusting on it. But if you hear that chain rattling, whatever side it may be, put a little more tension on them been doing it for a little while my 1600 used to do it real bad well, I'm gonna get you set up and get to it and hopefully we can get this sprocket on this chain back on this sprocket rather with little to no headache so let's get to it here's the here's the rear one I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this one some give me some slack since this one is all the way tight it's a 9 16 right here that's what this nut is and to hold that steel, I'll get me a flathead screwdriver and stick right above it. 
to hold that chain from spinning. Got a decent amount of slack in there. Get to the other end. Probably just go ahead and take this one all the way off. Be the easiest to do. These chains adjust really easy. One thing I do like about it. Let's get down here. See how easy this thing goes on. See if it's going to give us a big headache. All right, now we're back. I'm going to pull this chain down and back. You can see I'm trying to stay out your way so you can see what I'm attempting to do. Hopefully I'm not wedged in there too tight. What's going on right now is that the chain, see the back of the sprockets about right here? This chain is wedged up in between the sprocket and this housing. So my best attempt, I got to better push this back without this chain sliding this way and giving me slack so I can try to get it out of there. Of course, I got a flathead screwdriver and a heavy crescent wrench. You know, that always doubles as a hammer. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now my biggest thing is hoping I don't get my links off. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? We got it. I'm glad it wasn't too much of a pain in the butt, but hey, moral of the story, preventative maintenance. If it's loose, tighten it. Grease it before it needs grease. Anything, that's why it's very important to go over your meal, go over any equipment. Lawn mowers, tractors, it doesn't matter if it's got moving parts. Go over it from time to time, do an inspection, routine inspection, and find those things that are on its way to breaking and fix it and better it so you don't have to worry about it later and trying to keep it from doing it again, if at all possible. Breakdowns are waste of time, waste of money, and kind of stops progress. Well, not kinda. It 100% stops progress, and then you go back to working on equipment. But we're gonna get the ends of these chains uh, tightened up, everything adjusted back out. Not a very complicated thing. We'll get you all right here and show you how to do that and uh, got to put a log on the mill and cut with it and see how she runs. So this is how I go about on adjusting these chains. I usually get in the middle after I got them adjusted. Pick up pretty good tension right there. I mean, I ain't super straining on it, but picking up pretty hard. That's about, I don't know, roughly eight inches in the center of the mill, about eight inches from the, uh, from the rail right there. <laughs> You can go a little less than that. Uh, excuse me, you can go a little more than that, less tight, but more black on it. Run your mill. If it still chatters and clanks up inside the uh, carriage, tighten it up a little bit more. Just try not to over tighten it too extremely much. Kind of work yourself up to it. Well, we got that done. We'll put a log on there. We'll cut that log and see how it tracks. See if it makes any racket. Well, I would call that a done deal. I'm glad it didn't take very long to get that fixed. Chain went on fine. Track's fine now. No clanking of the chain in the uh, carriage rails. Worked out just right. Preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance. That's an example of one that was neglected for a little while. Hit a small stick right in the middle of cutting for a job and it caused that chain to pop off. Luckily, it wasn't that serious, but it could have been prevented just by a screwdriver and a 9 16 wrench to tighten that chain. Probably wouldn't have took me a minute to do it, but I was worried about getting the work done instead of making sure that little problem didn't happen. Anyways, walk over your meal every now and then, and if you see something like that needs to be tended to, tend to it. Don't put it off. Thank all of those who have subscribed and have liked and have commented. If you see something we didn't do or it's better to do it a little different way, comment below. We all learning here. Help somebody else out. Help me out. 
But with all that being said, one thing to remember, don't forget it. Y'all come back here.